Today I'm going to talk to you about steam. I love steam engines, there is something special in burning fuel to boil water to power a vehicle that you don't get from internal combustion engines. Perhaps something mystical. The year 2008 saw the completion of the LNER Peppercorn Class A1 Tornado. Built by the A1 Steam Trust, Tornado was conceived as an evolution of the LNER Peppercorn Class A1 class, incorporating improvements likely had steam continued, and changes for cost, safety, manufacturing and operational benefits, while replicating the original design sound and appearance. Tornado, completely new built, is considered the 50th Peppercorn A1. Due to recent snowstorms in the UK many public transport systems have been severely hampered, including trains between Ashford and Dover. On the 21st, the cold weather disabled the electric rail, leaving passengers stranded. Luckily, Tornado's Cathedral's Express apostrophe came to the rescue. This is just one example of older, supposedly inferior technology outperforming new machines. Tornado is proof that steam can be clean, efficient, and modern. My love of steam and all things old leads me to a grand idea. I propose a return to a simpler way of life without all of the unnecessary technology, social institutions and all other things that cause more harm than good. I see a world where we live our lives more in tune with the natural order, growing seasonal crops, and respecting natural human life cycles, and abandoning all foolish attempts to artificially alter them. The use of combustion engines, while advancing our society has also damaged our planet, and that damage threatens our very survival I suggest a drastic reduction in their use. For the majority of people this will mean the horse and cart, public transport will still use engines, although depending on the cost of fuel the power source may change. With oil still at a high price, and if peak oil is indeed true, then we must either find other sources of power. These must not only be plentiful but if possible renewable point there is one philosophy that may offer the best way forward, ironically this means going backwards. Peak civilization anachronism states that once the supply of finite resources declines society will regress to simpler modes of life in direct proportion to the availability of said resources. This originally referred to the concept of peak oil production, but now it could equally apply to any limited and or finite resource for instance fresh water, land, iron ore as well as crude oil and natural gas. The next issue that needs to be addressed is what will a retrogressed world look like, as I see it the state of such a world depends wholly on the manner in which it arrived at that state. That is to say, was the process of regression done with careful thought and planning or hurriedly with little or no time to plan? If the regression was done with care then in many respects it will be akin to living in past eras, but with some modern conveniences such as electricity and indoor plumbing. That being said it is undeniable that many of life's luxuries will come to an end air travel will certainly have to be ended as it is incredibly polluting and uses a lot of fuel, this will mean a return to steam or sail ships for international travel. But this is a small price to pay for the survival of society. Many people in the world feel certain nostalgia for the past, be it clothing, arts or even the natural world. There are many groups that are pushing for the reintroduction of animals which were once abundant in their country for example, in England there are movements for reintroducing wolves, bears and wild boars. And as the UK is a member of the European Union they are legally obliged to study the feasibility of doing so and then come forth with plans. Modern education is little more than mass indoctrination. Pupils are taught that one point of view is the only correct and valid one and any questioning or dissent is swiftly crushed. The purpose of education ought to be to present facts and opinions, have children remember the facts and critically examine the opinions. In that way you will have intelligent citizens who can think for themselves the next step to recreating aspects of the past is the teaching and promotion of manners and etiquette the youth of today have little to no awareness of such things as saying, please and thank you, deference to women and their elders, polite conversation and a host of things, which 60 odd years ago were commonplace. This theory was first put forward in 1989 by Horatio Harlesbeen. He stated if the promised life improvements of ever higher technological sophistication are not forthcoming certain groups within society may decide to reject mainstream contemporary culture altogether and return 
through lifestyle choices and decisions, to a point in time, and technology, in which they feel either psychologically more comfortable or simply less alienated. This is exactly what this proposal is, a willing return to the past. In fact, Harl's been himself touted such a societal change, he said, when oil becomes scarce and expensive, people will be forced to find alternative forms of transport. If no viable high-tech alternative has been found, this will mean the horse, the cart and our own two feet. People might actually discover that they enjoy the slower pace of life, the lack of intrusive noise and the feeling of safety, engendered by not having to be constantly on the lookout for life-threatening vehicles traveling at high speed. If humans decide to re-examine the logic or desirability of frequent travel or even the need for high-speed travel and find them wanting, then a voluntary deceleration is entirely feasible. I started this with the intention of praising steam to the heavens, but I ended up branching out a little, or rather, going off on a tangent. Anyway, I have added some interesting links in the description, feel free to check them out. Until next time, Pax.